<laughs> it's not. You haven't got a heartbeat. You better see a doctor. <laughs> if I'm not here to pick it up when you're finished, could you please just switch it off and take it with you? Don't leave it on the Sure. No worries. Yep. And you, you can come and find me later. Okay. So, it's okay. Kate. Oh, thanks very much. Glad you dug it. I'll see you later. G'day. How's it going? Oh, wonderful. Yourself? Awesome. Hello. Hello. I'm Trish. I'm Stuart for the session. Oh, a feedback form. Cool. It's Ains. All right. So, I fill this out after it's done. Forms. Alrighty. So if you guys don't mind being broadcasted, well, you're not being broadcasted, but I'm, uh, I'm broadcasting here on Periscope, which I've just told a couple of you about. Live streaming app. So um, just, you know, reiterating that. <laughs> so where, uh, where are you guys from? You're from the Netherlands, Mark. And I'm from the States. From the state, Which part? From Virginia. Virginia, right. Cool. It's a big, big states contingent here. I've yeah? yeah. I've met you before, haven't I? Luby. Oh, hi Luby. I haven't met you before, but I know but all Larry about has. you. Yes. Oh, I've told me before. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, it's good to finally meet you. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Oh, thanks for coming down. Yeah. I'm thinking this is the session I'm least likely to fall asleep in. Really? <laughs> well, geez, pressure's on. Yeah, pressure's on. Better, really better keep it up, beat. Keep me away. I got approximately <laughs> six hours sleep last night, so I'll see how we go. That's not too bad, actually, is it? Yeah, six hours. Right. Yeah. Considering the, you know, three-hour train ride back from Camden to Ke- to Hampton, and then this morning, like, yeah, it was more than a bad effort. <laughs> so are you from Sussex? No. No. Oh, right. Nowhere near Sussex. Cool. Okay. Yeah, it's a small place. And uh, where have you come from, you know? Yeah, right. Wow. Mission. Another Antipodean. There's a few few South Africans here as well. Yeah. Yeah. I met a guy named Redbeard yesterday. Yeah. He's a South African guy. He, he was filming the entire gig. He was up the front with his iPad just filming. Awesome. So enthusiastic and I think he's the biggest he's South African fan. <laughs> but, and what's your name? Scotland. Scotland. Whereabouts? The Farnworth. Like John O'Groats? That's the one. Really? Oh, <laughs> it's the only place in Far North Scotland I know. <laughs> I'd love to go to. Hang <laughs> up. I'd love to go to the Orkneys sometime. I've never, never been that far up. I'm actually going to be in Scotland on the weekend playing a gig in Aberdeenshire. Do you know anywhere. Like off the top of your head, that would be like a cool place to visit, or you know, permaculture-wise, up in the There's islands. There's a permaculture, That's yeah. I'm playing there in Aberdeenshire. Yeah, oh, really? yeah. Okay. yeah, on and Sunday. Yeah. Towns. You should visit Ludwig and get the chance. Where? Ludwig Appletons. He's from Belgium and he does permaculture just outside of Finthorn. Oh, so not in Finthorn. No. Okay. Cool. Like the next town along is yeah, cool. We've got uh, 18 people coming, Jim. It's a small workshop. Sorry, I'm just chatting to my periscopers here. It's like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Yeah, so we're just waiting for a few people to arrive and then we'll, we'll kick off. I don't think you'll be able to see the slides. Are you already streaming? Yeah, I'm streaming on Periscope, which is a little app that my friend Costa got me onto. And it's, um, they're, doing, they're doing it on YouTube down there, aren't they? In the hall. I heard. That's what uh, Alan told me. But yeah, it's all kind of, it's all new to me. G'day. Returning later. Later? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we go for an hour and a half, so yeah, feel free to come back. I have to give you a link for translation of one of your songs. Oh, really? In Serbian? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, come back for sure. Thanks heaps. See ya. Been everywhere, man. <laughs> um, I think we're finishing up at around one, oh, 12, 12.30. 12.30, yeah. No worries. Another couple of minutes and then 
just get started. to pin down the greatest gig I've ever had because they've all been so diverse and different. Like, in some ways, last night was the greatest gig we've ever had because there were just so many familiar faces yeah. from all over the world that we've met over the last three years just converging in one place yeah. and including, like, Robin Francis, my teacher, and <laughs> people from Australia who, you know, just people from the whole journey. And it's, it was, like, really mind-blowing to just yeah. have that that all of those those people in one place it's it's amazing and the convergence i'm really looking forward to as well which night are you playing at the emergence? Uh, which night um the last night the tuesday night yeah so you're going up to scotland and going up to scotland then coming back and then, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a mission g'day Hello. welcome all righty well we might get started just because it's three past eleven and people might have gone to other workshops and then they'll come here later um, oh, if it, if it helps, you guys, I don't mind leaving it open, but if it's going to be like no, no, noise pollution. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's a good idea. Oh, alrighty. <coughs> so, excuse me, I'm a little bit sick this morning. I've been on tour for about a month and just gigging every night of the week, so um, it takes its toll sometimes. <laughs> but... How many of you guys were at the dinner last night? A couple of you weren't? All right, cool. Well, I'll just... You may! Come, sit down, April. This is April from Australia, everyone. One of the... Part of the permi furniture back home. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my name's Charlie McGee, and uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm in a band called Formidable Vegetable Sound System which is possibly the most ridiculous band name in the world. And um, the band has a, a, not much to do with actual vegetables. But, um, yeah, we, we basically have been touring around for the last three years promoting the principles of permaculture and trying to introduce people who haven't heard of permaculture before to the concepts and, and the ideas to, you know... I guess, you know, being something like a permaculture missionary, although I hate that. <laughs> but it's... Anyway, yeah, so it's like, you know, save the seeds! <laughs> just write a gospel. But I'll just sing you a little song uh, to kind of introduce to you what, what we do and, and what I do. I've written a song for each of David Holmgren's 12 permaculture principles. And uh, I usually like to introduce, you know, start at the very beginning with the very first one, uh, observe and interact, because I think it's a great way to get people to think about what they already have and the, that's the thing that I get the most from permaculture is that sense of empowerment of using what I already have and that's why I play music it's it's not that I'm a, a rock star gardener or an amazing permaculture designer but mu music is what I do and what I did before permaculture and so it took that observation and the interaction to come to that conclusion that, that this is what I can contribute right now to the permaculture movement and you know I obviously aim to move forward into other things and one day grow a food forest of my own and get into the nuts and bolts of on-the-ground permaculture. But for now, it's about starting with, with what you have. And that's kind of, I guess, the message that I want to try and get across, which comes across way better in song. So, everything you need is right in front of you, in front of you. When you learn to see, yeah, <laughs> move your body. Good things come to you. Muscle memory. Well, all you have to do, ready, is stop and take a look around. That's it. <laughs> Before you intervene. Yeah, it's still too early in the morning. Don't do anything, anything. Come in, sit down or stand up. Or come to all your senses. We're having a dance party here at the Permaculture Conference. They'll tell you everything. First, you've got to learn to just stop and take a look around. Take a look around. Listen to that sound. 
Why not take a whiff? Cause you'll see much better if you use more than just your eyes. That's right, it's about muscle memory here as well. Learning to remember cultures of the eyes, ears, mouth, nose, and body. So when you talk about pattern understanding, you know, ancient cultures and tribes have used song and dance for thousands of years, and I'm going to be talking about that a little bit. So, uh, yeah, thanks for joining in, guys. <laughs> so anyway, thanks. All right. You were just a passerby? <laughs> cool. Oh. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> so, yeah, that was just a, a, little, a little bit of um, the first song on our, on our permaculture album, which is called Look Around, and it's... Um, yeah, I, I just want to talk a little bit about using memes in permaculture and and creating the culture. Like, because for anyone to get interested in this stuff, I mean, we've all become interested for different reasons and, you know, been guided on our different life journeys to, to arrive at permaculture. But for people who need a little bit more convincing or a little bit more of a push, we need to make it irresistible for them. And supremely enjoyable and so to do this we need to we really need to engage stuff like the arts and music and culture and build the culture of permaculture and I think this little story is a good um, kind of metaphor for how to bring about change using the arts no I didn't draw that I'm not an artist (laughs) I'm actually a drummer (laughs) I just just pretend to play the ukulele (laughs) But um, this is the, the old fable, you might, you might know this one with, um, I don't know it that well actually, but I thought it was a great metaphor, and it's, it's about the, the, the sun and the wind um, having a bit of a showdown over who can make this guy take his coat off, who can, who can get the coat off this man. So the sun and the wind were arguing one day, they're like, I'm stronger, no I'm stronger, no I'm the wind, I can blow anything away, and I'm the sun, I can you know roast and, and whatever, like, I'm more powerful than you are. And then they said, okay, well, let's put it to the test. And they saw this guy walking down on the earth with this beautiful cloak on him. And the wind said, okay, let's have a test. The first person to get the cloak off that man is thereby the strongest. And so the sun said, all right. And then the wind said, all right, I'll go first. And so the wind blew and blew and blew, trying to get the coat off the man. And all that happened was he pulled the coat around him tighter And he just forged on through the wind. (coughs) And after the wind had blown all he could, he realised that he couldn't get the coat off the man. Then it was the sun's turn. And the the sun came out and shone and shone. And slowly the guy started heating up. And after a while, he just sat down under a tree and took the coat off of his own accord. So I see this as a really nice sort of parable for how to bring change in a positive way. So, you know, like, by being the sun rather than the wind, instead of instilling fear, like, you should do this or this will happen, like, or else, you know, you present it in a way that makes people want to just take off their cloaks and kind of start start building the change. And um, so, yeah, our friend Costa in Australia was telling me the other day that he went to a conference about farming in Australia, and farming's at at a critical point in a lot of um, parts of Australia because of our, you know, depleted soil and stuff. But there's a lot of people doing some incredible work. And he said that um, one of the points raised at this conference was that farming, and in this case I'd also say permaculture, needs to become the new rock and roll. So, you know, we need to build it into a culture, into a, into a culture of celebration and festivities and stuff that people want to engage in, not just at a grassroots, like, on-the-ground level, but in their everyday lives and every part of their lives. So whether they're gardeners or whether they're accountants or whether they're, you know, just stay-at-home sort of housekeepers. Hey, welcome. Oh, hey, Come hey. in. <clears throat> so that's why that's where the power of the meme kind of comes in. And I, I first started hearing about memes. Well, you, you've all seen the memes going around the internet, right? Like, like the... Um, the little picture of the photo of something with some words underneath and it's usually some funny little joke or something. And they're, <coughs> they're called memes. Hey, man, how's it going? But basically, all a meme is, is, uh, I mean, I say memes are the genes of culture because genes are... Hey, Tony, come in. There's two more seats. <laughs> Farming is the new rock and roll. That's what we're talking about. sit next to you. Oh, that's good, April. I'm glad I don't smell too bad. <laughs> 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 I 
All right. Welcome. So, oh, excuse me. Yeah, Jim's right. I'm periscoping this back to some friends in Australia, and uh, Jim Croft in Canberra has just reiterated the statement that we said that farming and permaculture is the new rock and roll. So um, that's kind of what this is about, and, and the way we get there is through creating memes. So just like your bodies, the genes in your body are replicated through you know cellular division, and you know genes in biology are, are replicated that way. Memes are ideas that are replicated through cultural practices, and a meme is basically, hey, how's it going? Sorry. That's all right. Come in. A meme is any sort of bite-sized, accessible piece of information that can be. Easily replicated, exactly like April's shirt. <laughs> I do that. Yeah. Yeah. So a song is a meme. Yeah. And a picture is a meme, and you know, a, a little phrase is a meme, a mnemonic. <coughs> and so, genes shape our bodies and shape our biological, physical world around us, but memes shape our cultures, mm -hmm. and in turn also help to shape the physical world around us. So it's a really interesting. Thing to think about the the um, capability of the intangible to shape the tangible, and so that's where I'm really obsessed with with the idea of music and the arts bringing about massive changes with, with through things like permaculture. So, how the hell does a meme shape? How does a song actually shape a physical part of the landscape? Hi, do you want to come in? Come in, oh, come in. Come in. There's, there's no seats left, but you can have a seat. <laughs> so you might have seen various uh, versions of this meme. <laughs> it's probably one of the biggest memes uh, of, of the um, last few years. But th I like this one because the, the Hindus believe that the, the world was created from a sound and that OM was the first sound which then shaped the world. And I think this is a really interesting idea because if you think about that ability of the intangible to shape the tangible, you know, whether you see it as a metaphor or, or, or you're a Hindu and, you know, you see it as literal, it, it kind of is true when you think about it. I mean, the sound becomes the action or the, the thought then becomes the action which then becomes the culture and then shapes the world around us. So... You know, if, if it all sounds a little bit kind of esoteric and like, what the hell is this guy talking about?